I must put this on the calendar while it's still in my head. Lower Loxley, late May 1st. With birthday get-together, June 16th. I think it sounds just right, don't you? And David will let me know the details when it's all yeah, sorted. A proper event, but still fun. Ruth's birthday? Lower Loxley, late May 1st. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, Wednesday. And everything's fine for that, is it? Of course. There's nothing you need? If there's anything I need, I'll fix it myself. I know, but I was... Mum, you don't have to worry. We have a full complement of stalls, all ready to go, all allocated their pitches. Yes, yeah, I heard about that. Heard what about it? Well, isn't there some grumbling about... Grumbling? You know, about where they've been put. Some of them. Oh, uh, it's easily fixed. Is it? Yes, I'm talking to them. I've allowed some leeway over where they go, and I can adjust. Look, you can see... Oh, yeah, you've been very thorough. Mm, I'll talk to them. Honestly, it's only a problem because we have so many stalls. Because I offered a discount to people within a ten-mile radius. Yeah, that was a great idea, mm. darling. Oh, in fact, I was talking to the Bridge Farm lot just this morning. Summer Orchard and Helen's Cheese Store. Wonderful. Mm. At least, uh, I think Helen's on board. She was a bit distracted when I spoke to her. But the thing is, you don't have to worry about that either. No, I, I mean, I'm not worried. I'm leaving it all to you, and I'm happy to do that. And when the trustees... Oh, the trustees. When they ask, I'll look forward to telling a them how... Bunch of tweedy pensioners. <laughs> Freddy. Knocking back sherry and casually deciding people's futures. Well, they're not all like that. <laughs> Anyway, they haven't decided yet. No, they're deciding about deciding, which amounts to the same thing. I hope they realise all I've done for this. I dropped out of the cricket so I can concentrate on planning the Mayfest. And was that such a huge sacrifice? Not really. But I do want them to know this is my gig, not yours, with me photoshopped in. I'll make sure they know. Yours, entirely yours. Mm. Oh, I've got Ian Craig in his pizza van coming. Oh, good. Mm. And Eddie. Eddie? Yes. Eddie Grundy? Yes, why? No, nothing. Except... What? He can be a bit of a loose cannon. <gasps> What's he doing exactly? Oh, it's a sort of wildlife stool? Wildlife underground, I think he called it. I see. Well, what's wrong with that? This ain't on, Tom. Start a play in 15 and we ain't nearly ready. Relax, we'll be fine. You reckon? We got the chair of the Borsetshire Cricket Foundation coming to watch. What? So I've been told. No one told me. Only what's she going to see, eh? We got no scorer, we're an umpire down, and half my lot look like they've been backside first through a mangle. Only the ones who are on Jazz's stag night. Exactly. They've been nobbled. What? You did something to their drinks. Oh, rubbish. Tracy's Tigers have been interfered with. Complete rubbish. You only have to look at my team. They're as bad as yours. Mm, I suppose so. Lee looks a proper washout. Uh, Lee wasn't on the stag night. He couldn't make it. You should have had more discipline, like we did on my hen night. Uh, anyway, what's this about Tracy's Tigers? You can't call yourself that. Why not? Because we're the Tigers. You're not. Tom's Tigers. You are so not. Sorry, I'm late. It's all been a bit muddly this morning. Jim Lloyd in shades. Necessarily so. Afternoon, Jim. Tom. Now I've seen everything. Jim Lloyd, in shades and on the squiff. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Jim the dude. I've been looking for my glasses, my proper glasses. Well, we were just talking about team names, Jim. We're the Tigers and Tracy's called her lot the Tigers too. Well, Tracy's lot are the Tigers. She sent me a message about it yesterday. That's not fair. Well, it will have to be. Call yourself something else. How about tadpoles? But we've got used to the tigers, Jim. Tom's tadpoles. Or simply Tom's eleven. Eleven? That's way too dull. Well, it's more accurate than tigers. No, it's not even that. Now that Freddy's cried off. Tornadoes, then. Only, may we please make a start? Play is supposed to begin at a quarter to. Tornadoes, right, then. The tigers are ready. Yeah. 20 overs aside, no bowler to bowl more than four <laughs> overs. Yeah, yeah, we know all that. Yeah. Then let's get on with the toss. <laughs> For heaven's sake, what was that? Kenton trying out his fanfare. Fanfare? For when batters go out to bat. Why? Or a blast of music for when someone's out. Yeah. 
Yes, but why? To add a bit of fizz. It doesn't need a bit of fizz. Cricket has its own soundscape. Leather on willow and a smattering of informed applause. That's all it needs. Oh, oh, oh heaven's sake. <laughs> Don't mind if I sit here, do you? No, oh, help yourself, Oliver. I'm only on a short break anyway. Me too. I'll take my next group round at quarter past. So, summoning up your nerve, are you? Oh, no, they'll be fine. I saw them getting out of their coach. You never know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they can be deceptive. Like Tracy's head night. You didn't go, did you? I did. Special dispensation, <laughs> because I got them a room at Grey Gables. And how was it? Well, I don't mind admitting, Freddy. I was a bit nervous. <laughs> Have you ever been in close proximity to hens? No, well, not that sort. They can be troublesome. Really rather basic. Basic sort of behaviour. <laughs> Tribal, in a way, I suppose. I witnessed a few rowdy nights out in the army, but they weren't as basic as some of the hen nights I've seen. And that's how it was on Friday? Friday? No, 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 uh, no, this is what I'm saying. Friday surprised me. In the end, I found it sort of encouraging. Oh, really? Well, there was, at one point, a, uh, shall we say, a frank exchange of views. You mean a fight. Which I thought might ruin the whole thing. But it didn't. No. Somehow it turned into laughter, which took the steam out of the thing. <laughs> and all was fine after that. It was just as stag do last night, wasn't it? Yes. They could be fairly uninhibited occasions, <laughs> too. Well, this one had Jim Lloyd in tow and Jazzer on crutches, so it couldn't have been too wild. <laughs> True enough. I don't get it myself. All that macho strutting about. Still. You're all right, are you, Freddy? Me? Why? You look bothered. Oh, that. Just planning. Planning always goes wrong, especially when it's me doing it. Something gone awry, has it? A bit. Actually, it's Eddie who's gone wrong. He's huh? booked himself a stall for the Lower Loxley Late May Fest. Oh, yes, he was telling me said it was a wildlife display. Wildlife underground. Turns out that means ferrets. Yes. Well, you know. He told me it was called ferrety fun. Oh, dear. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, it's, it's all going a bit off-piste. I'm now worrying he'll be sending ferrets up people's trouser legs, <laughs> which sets the wrong tone, especially when I'm already under scrutiny. There's another one there. Well played, sir. Two to Alistair. Oh, I, I wish Kenton wouldn't keep doing that. You're losing your papers there, Jim. Uh, thank you, thank you. Well, why do it on paper anyway? Why not score straight into the school book? I want to make sure it's neat enough. I, I'll copy these in after the match. Well, that was a wide. What? Was it? One more to our score. Yes. And an extra ball. Uh, yes, I am aware, Tracy. Thank you. Scoreboard! Uh, what? Can you update the scoreboard, Jim? I'll update at the end of the over. Yes, but Linda signalled one short last over. Did she? So it should be 20 for two, not 21 for two. One short. Kirsty didn't ground her that properly. That's a bit picky. It's the laws of cricket, Tracy. I didn't see the signal. You want to check with Linda? Uh, uh, no, no. Maybe you should. The tadpoles Tornadoes. Are obviously desperate to claim any crumb of comfort they can grab. I just want the scoring to be accurate, that's all. Uh, one off Kirsty and two on Alistair. And one for the wide. Uh, uh, yes, all right, all right. So it's the trustees who are scrutinising. I can feel them watching me all the time. Well, but in a way, everyone has that. We're all watched, one way or another. Yes, but this lot don't believe in me. I mean, that's their starting point. Then you have to show them that they're wrong. Yeah, and, and what if they're not? They are, Freddy. I know they are. But they think that... That picture we've been arguing about, I put it in storage where it got damaged. Therefore, my fault. Really? No, but that's what they think. I know they do. Sometimes I wonder whether it's worth banging my head against the same old wall. Just let them get on with it. No. Walk away. No, Freddy, I won't have you give up like this. Surely you're not going to be daunted by Eddie and a few ferrets. Well, what can I do? That you work out for yourself. You're perfectly capable. You've handled worse situations than this. Life and death situations. And handled them brilliantly. You know what I'm talking about. These people doubt you. Well, show them they're wrong. 
make Wednesday a success. Oliver, good to see you. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop. I've got a group I'm just about to show around. Oh, well, we mustn't get in the way of that. Bye, Oliver. I'll be seeing you, Freddy. Let me know what you think. I will. Look, Freddie, this is not me taking the reins. This is only asking a quite reasonable question, as I might ask anyone working here. What have I done about Eddie Grundy? Oh, well, yes. No, that's fair enough. I only want to know. OK, I've spoken to him, got some sort of idea of what he plans, and he'll need to tweak it a bit. I'm getting back to him on that. Oh, uh, well, good. A few little things to iron out, nothing more. Wednesday's going to be fine. It. He's out. Chris has run out. Uh, that was Harrison, wasn't it? No, Rex. Oh, uh, a direct hit by Rex. So um, the Tigers win by one run. Oh, I don't believe it. So close. Brilliant throw. We've done it. Last ball. Great throw. We've done it, yeah? <laughs> by one run, Tracy. Oh, I demand a recount. You what? what? Jim's scoring's been all over the place. I demand a recount. Oh, no, no. We're not having that. Oh, well, perhaps we should, though, Tracy, just to be absolutely sure. I am absolutely sure. We won. Well, I'm not. Uh, so you cross them off as you go and you do a running total? Uh, so I know they've been counted, yes. Well, there's two here not counted. Uh, oh, let me see that. Here, look. Oh, this is a waste of time. You know you lost, Tom, so just suck it up. We're owed two more runs, which would give us 107. It, no, this one's a leg and by. And that means we'd win by one wicket. That's an L for leg, not a one. What? The, the other one? Yes, no. no. Well, that ain't a one either. I, 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 I can't be sure. Jim! It, it could be a one I missed. Well, so what now? Well... It must be a tie. No. I think that's the fairest thing. We could have a super over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 no, no, we could not. And Kenton, will you stop making that diabolical row? Oh, there was no provision for a super over. The Mark Hebden trophy is therefore shared between the Tigers and the Tadpoles. Tornadoes. We've been cheated here. Just because you lost track of your blooming specs. No, I know where my glasses are, Tracy. Where? Uh, somewhere on the trail of Jazza's Stagnite. And I will find them. All we have to do is to retrace our steps. Oh, there's a lot of glass to clean, Helen. I don't want the window looking grubby, though. Especially not this week. Oh, no, I really don't mind doing it. I'm just saying. It's big. It's bigger than it looks. Oh, I'm grateful, though, Mum. Uh, while we're talking favours... The boys? You couldn't have them on Wednesday, could you? If I take that stall at Lower Loxley, I need to be there, and Lee has to work at least until Look, two. Helen, Helen, we're always happy to do it. Oh. Both of us, so stop worrying about it. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. OK, I will. You, you heard about Jim's glasses, did you? Yeah, Lee said he lost them. He did. At the cricket? No, on Jazza's stag, do. He certainly missed them at the cricket. Couldn't see the umpire's signals, could hardly read his own notes. And it ended in a draw? A tie. Oh. Scores level. Jim and Jazza have now set out on a mission to find them. Starting at Greenacres? No, they're retracing their steps from the stag night. Can they remember their steps? <laughs> Not very clearly, no. Well, it could take a while. Like when Dad lost his. <laughs> oh, yes. Remember? Best part of a year. <laughs> they turned up in the end, though. At the bottom of the grain pit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's Lee feeling now? Now? Yeah, about, about, about San Francisco. And now he's had the weekend to think it through. Well, he's disappointed. He was looking forward to us all being there. We all were. But he completely understands the money situation and why we can't. Oh, I'm sure he does. He couldn't be more supportive. Oh, look, it's postponed, Helen, not cancelled. You and the boys will go one day. Yeah, of course we will. Right. Window looks about done now, don't you think? It's brilliant, yeah. Good. It's been such a success. People love it. Yeah, we've had great feedback about it. Almost all positive. Almost? Well, there was one that wasn't on social media. What was the problem? Well, you know... Just nitpicking? Well, it's more than that. It was nasty, sort of personal. 
Then take no notice. Oh, you can't, though, can you? It's not easy to forget. No, I mean it, Helen. You dwell on it and it'll get inside you and you don't want that. Oh, no. I'm telling you from experience, keep it out of your head. Oh, it's Harrison. Um, press the button. Harrison? Uh, press the button and speak to us. Oh, sorry to startle you. Uh, no, we, we, we were just gossiping. Tony said I'd find you here. What can we do for you? It's just a couple of words with Helen, if you've got the time. Uh, not through glass, presumably. No. Can I come through? I, I tell you what, I'll make a start cleaning the floor. You two can go into the office. How's that? Yes? Brian, hi, it's me. Yes, I know. I was just wondering, the shearing today. Yes? The Brookfield sheep in the barn. I know where they are, Adam. What about them? Uh, everything's all set up for that, is it? I should think so. Right. Well, you set it up. I assume Ed Grundy's coming over with his team. Yes, yes, I believe so. Then that's the answer to your question. Good, yes. Uh, Stella's back on Friday. Yeah, that's the plan. Which means handing Weaver back. Her dog. <laughs> Xander will miss him. He's been great to have around. Oh, and uh, you heard about the cricket? Yes. A tie. They swapped me for Chris, did I tell you? No. Mm, some sort of transfer deal. I think they thought I'd make a fuss, but really... <laughs> why would you be bothered? Uh, why indeed? It's only for fun. Was there anything else you wanted, Adam? What? Um... Uh, N no, because no, not really. you know. Yes, of course. I I'll let you get on then, Brian. Have a good day. Right. Uh, thanks for calling. Bye. I think it's best if I tell you straight off. The Crown Prosecution Service has said no, hasn't it? I'm sorry. I could tell it wasn't going to be good. It's always a difficult decision whether or not to prosecute, and they have to weigh up so many different factors. Like what? Well, there's... I mean, it seems clear enough. He tried to take Jack, and yet they decide for him and against me. It honestly isn't a decision against you, Helen. That's what it feels like. The charge would be kidnap, and Jack is his son. But... I know it doesn't make sense, but the lawyers would be all over that fact, and in the end, the CPS has to decide if charging him would be in the public interest. And they've decided it wouldn't be. That's about it. Right. Do you think they're right, Harrison? It doesn't matter what I think. Yeah, you're right. I don't like to leave you like this. No, I'm fine. Do you want me to have a word with Pat and Tony? No. W would that help? No, thank you. I'll do that. I know it's not easy for you. It's good of you to come in person. I couldn't tell you something like this over the phone. Well, thank you. And don't worry. I'm fine. Perfectly fine. I love watching the shearing. Mm, me too. It's so... Uh... Busy. Proper farming busy. It's kind of inspiring. Inspiring? Well, it makes me think I ought to get back into the swing of things. Uh, I've not done as much as I might, as I should have done while Stella's been away. I've leaned too heavily on you. Oh, I don't mind. Well, that's not the point. Only too pleased to help. No, 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 Adam, no, no. I should have shouldered more of the workload. I'm grateful to you. Um, here. What's this? Uh, it's a rather nice bottle of my favourite malt. I was going to drop it in later, but since you're here... You, you don't have to do this. No, 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 go on, go on, with my thanks. Well, thanks, that's good of you, Brian. Oh. Well, well, I also wanted to thank you for that phone call this morning. Oh, I was just uh, checking on arrangements for shearing. No, you weren't. No, you phoned, because it's our wedding anniversary today. Oh, well... It'll be in our uh, 47th. But you had the tact and decency not to mention it. I was desperately trying to see how to steer the conversation round. Well, you don't have to. Anyway, it's nice to be thought of. The girls are lovely, but you know what they're like. They organise. Because they love you. I know, I know. But they can make you feel a bit like a spreadsheet. <laughs> I really appreciate you not mentioning the anniversary. And, uh, meanwhile, back in the swing? From now on, yes. Full throttle, proper farming. I've missed it. Oh, doing what? Oh, real muddy boots farming. I'll be going through the accounts. <laughs> well, as you remind me, Stella's back on Friday. 
to have the books in order for that. Uh, After all, we don't want to slap this from Stella, do we? <laughs> Has Harrison no clout at all? It's not his decision. They'd listen to him. Of course they'd listen to him. No, Tony, this is the CPS. Yes, I know that. But what are they up to? They're, they're certainly not looking for justice, are no, they? No, listen, Tony. All this... they're bothered about is money. Saving money. Unless someone leans on them, which is what the police should have been this doing. This isn't their fault, Dad. You know it isn't. If they had the will to do it, that man could have been behind bars by now. Yes, but he's not, is he? I know. Because of the way the law works. We saw all that last time. Injustice, decisions that made no sense. We should have known. What? I was never certain they'd act. If they don't think the case is winnable, they won't prosecute. Mum's right. And now we have to work out what we're going to do about it. Well, that's what I've been doing. It's no good just sounding off. Sounding off? Oh, is that what you think this is? No, I didn't mean it Believe like that. Believe me, Helen, I've been trying my damnedest to get that man locked up. So that was a mistake, was it? We're not saying that. Then what are you saying? Because I don't understand this anymore. This item here, see? 15K. What's it for? What it says, I suppose. Deposit. Build. Build? Build what? Uh, is this what you asked me over for? Well, I've no recollection of this, Adam. I hoped you could clarify it for me. Well, uh, I think it must be for the disc drill. Drill? Mm, Stella wanted to buy a new disc drill, remember? I don't think I do, no. Must have been about the time Mum died, you were preoccupied. Look, if we were forking out this sort of sum, I'd have known about it. And this says deposit, meaning more to pay. I would have known, Adam. Oh, here we are, look. Uh, Contract. It is the drill. Oh! You mean that fancy disc drill she kept going on about? Oh, I should think so. The one she saw at the Ag Tech show? She's ordered it. She must have done. Well, I never agreed to that. No? Of course not. It's all coming back to me now. I said I'd think about it. Well, it's definitely been ordered. Well, then she can unorder it. No. Get the deposit uh, back. I, I don't think you can. The deposit is effectively part of a contract to build what? it, to make the drill to order. We're tied into it. This is ridiculous. Uh, looking at this, it should be arriving in a week or so. Then there'll be further payments to make. What further payments, exactly? 45K on delivery. 45 Plus two more 45s in 2024 and 25. Oh, fire! That, that's 150 over three years. What is the woman doing? And you're, you're sure you didn't authorise her to go ahead? What, to the tune of 150,000? Of course I didn't, did you? Me? I mean, did she talk to you about it? Did she ask you? Uh, uh, well, I, I certainly didn't know she'd actually ordered it. But you did discuss it. Oh, Justin... I ought to take this. And I'd better get back. I'm supposed to be picking Xander up. Justin. Dad? Dad! I don't want to hold you up. Uh, no, no. I, I was just about to take the baler out. Oh, well, this can wait. So can the silage. Look, I'm sorry, Helen. I didn't mean to storm off like no, that. No, no, it's all right. It's just that, well, I had everything banked on that decision. I know. I convinced myself the CPS would prosecute that we were actually getting somewhere. No, I'm sorry too. And I can't thank you enough for all you've been doing. It's not over, though, Helen. Well, maybe it is. They won't accept kidnap, but there are... Other charges that might work better. I don't think I want that, Dad. There are things we can bring up. Like what? <laughs> like what? Y you mean what? Abuse? Rape? And if they prosecute for those things, Dad, what then? Days with us in court, having everything turned over and over. I don't think I can do that again. I understand. I know you want him put away. Only because I hate the thought of him still being out there. But all I want is him gone. If we take the criminal route, that's going to bring him back into my life. Briefly, yes. And we still have the civil case so we can at least stop him getting access to Jack. I don't like it, love. I want to nail him. But not if you don't want me to. Dad, I just want to live a proper life. 
without him. Please. Morning, Lee. Just been to see Helen, have you? Yeah, she wanted me to pick up some forms for her. Oh, yeah? Something to do with this Lower Loxley event tomorrow. Oh, the late May fest. The cheese stall, yeah. Oh, Clary's doing that. <laughs> and Eddie. Eddie's helping on the cheese stall. Oh, no, no, he has a stall of his own. Oh. <laughs> Ferity fun. Clary says it should fit in very nicely. Yeah, why not? Sort of country crafts kind of thing. Well, I said I'd take the forms over to Freddie Parger to for her. Well, you'd best be off then. And it's all go here, so I can't stand around chatting. No, right. Half term week, see. And a bit of warm weather always makes us busy with the ice cream. Yeah, well, don't let me stop you. Are you okay, are you, Lee? Me? Why? Recovered all right from Jazz's stag do, have you? Oh, no, no, I didn't go in the end. Oh. Yeah, something cropped up at home. You know how it is. Well, nothing too difficult, I hope. Nothing to worry about, no. Well, sounds to me like you didn't miss very much. Oh, I heard it was a laugh. Laugh? They were all over the shop, Lee, them stags. <laughs> it was supposed to be all in the one pub, but could they stick to a plan? No, they could not. It was a debacle. Not like the hen night, then. Oh, not at all. Which was a great success, I heard. Well, I think we had a bit more dignity about us than the stags. <laughs> Apparently, even Jim ended up the worse for wear. They all tipped into a restaurant in Borchester, Neil told me, and that was well after 11. And I know for a fact they stopped for Chuck's chips after that. Chuck's? Chips. The burger van. They must have stuffed themselves solid by the time they'd finished. And Jim's glass is still missing. That still missing. Wouldn't be surprised if they never turn up. No, you were well out of it, Lee, if you ask me. So, I'll call round tomorrow morning. No, there's no need. Pick up the boys. He can bring them here on his way to work. Well, are you sure? Of course. So you the bother. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Poor Lee. Honestly, Mum, you won't mind. Yes, I, I know. I just meant... Well, Poor Lee. Oh. I thought he looked a bit down when he picked up the forms. Oh, I know. He says he's fine, but it's difficult to talk at the moment. Oh. Yeah. Helen Archer? Uh, yes, that's me. Sorry, I didn't know you were with someone. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm just going. Harriet Highway, North Borsetshire District Council. I'll see you for lunch then, shall I? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mum. Uh, about one? Whenever you're ready. Don't think I'm expecting you, am I? Probably not. But I had a couple of calls in the area and I thought I'd drop by and see if I could catch you. Um, you're from the council? I'm a food inspector. Oh. Probably should have said that from the start so we know where we stand. Which we need to do. Well, I don't think we're due for an inspection yet. No, well, this isn't a standard food hygiene inspection. We've had an email. An email? Specifically, a complaint. What? I'd like to see the staff in your ice cream making section. I don't know where this has come from. I can't tell you that, I'm afraid. Surely we're entitled to know the nature of the complaint. Afraid not. Well, nor who made it? Nor that, <sighs> no. All complaints are treated with the utmost confidentiality. And taken seriously. Meaning anyone can come along and say whatever they like. The intention could be malicious, yes. But we still have to go through all this. Well, we can't know whether it's a waste of everyone's time or a matter of genuine concern. Not until we've investigated. OK, well then, can we please make a start? This is a very busy time for us. I'd like to be shown around. The production area, storage, waste disposal... Yep, I can do that. Actually, I'd like Susan here to show me. Me? If you don't mind... And, Helen, you told me you have a food safety management plan. I yes. I'd need to look through that. Perhaps you could get it for me while I talk to Susan. Yeah, of, of course. Um, won't be a minute. Now, <coughs> Susan, talk me through what you do when you come into work of a morning. Well, uh, we do everything we're supposed to do. Which is what? Uh, well, there's lists to follow, and we do follow them. Uh, you can see we've got these lovely white coats we have to wear and, and then hats. So we've got new hats and they've got built-in hair nets. So you put on the coats and hats. Anything else? Um, no. Uh, oh, yes, we, we, we pin our hair up before we do anything else. Good. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, there's a list on the wall through there. You can see for yourself what we do. 
And Brian had no idea? Well, he had some foggy notion about Stella badgering him about a drill. And the more we talked, the more it began to come back to him. Except for the bit about saying yes? Hmm. Well, he wouldn't remember that. Stella went ahead without ever getting his agreement. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Brian wouldn't like that. He didn't. He talked himself into a temper about it. I haven't seen him flare up like that in ages. Yeah, but it's hardly Stella's fault. Well, I don't know. 150,000 over three years? She'd surely need his say-so for that. You spoke to her, though. Well, me? Did, didn't you have when things were so bad for all the family, you told her to go ahead and make decisions? Well, yeah, but... And that's what she's done. No, no, there's a difference. Is there? Well, encouraging her to take initiative is not the same as approving massive payouts like this one. Well, it might look the same to Brian, don't you think? You mean she asks me for advice? And what you say sounds to her like permission to proceed. <sighs> that's not what I meant, though. No, I mean, I'm sure it's not. I'm only saying... <sighs> This sounds very tricky. You'll have to tread carefully. It never occurred to me she was here for an inspection. No, it came completely out of the blue. She seems so jolly. It was probably a front. So someone's complained? Yes, but she wouldn't say who. Did they find anything? Oh, it was so stressful. I've never seen poor Susan. Helen! Surprise. No, they didn't find anything. Thank heavens for that. I knew they wouldn't. So it's all clear. But when someone's nosing around with a clipboard, you begin to doubt yourself. So, yes, it's all clear, and I have a very short report I can file away. No recommendations needed. Oh, Helen, that, that must be such a relief. Yes, it is, in a way. Well, what's the matter? It's not really over, though, is it, Mum? I haven't found anything. Not when you think about it. So the best thing is that you can put it behind you. Yes, but you have to wonder who made that complaint. Well, we don't know. Not from the district council, we don't. And we can't, know. But it seems clear enough to me. No, This is Helen. exactly the sort of thing you no. do, Mum. Play these little mind games. There are bad-tempered, awkward people out there I who know. complain for fun or because they're bored. Yes, but, Mum, this really could be him. You don't know that. I mean, it's not just this, is it? Yes, I think it probably is. An isolated incident. One complaint, some sad person no. out to make trouble. No, there are other things happening. Like that online review the other day. The, the way it was worded. Don't, Helen. You mustn't think like this. And the this. letters from the solicitors all completely unreasonable. Stop. Look, just suppose you are right. Suppose he is behind this complaint or, or the review. Why would he do something like that? Get inside my head. Then don't let him. Remember what you said to Dad yesterday. All you want is for him to be out of your life. If that's what you want, then stop thinking about him now. It's not easy, Mum. I don't want to think about him, I but... know. I, I know. <sighs> I tell you what. You're bringing the boys over tomorrow. Why not bring them tonight and let them sleep over? Tonight? Yeah. They don't have a bit of time on your own, just you and Lee. What do you think? I'm pretty sure Brian could come round to the idea in the end. It's an impressive bit of kit. And actually, <laughs> it's the right thing for Home Farm to be investing in. And how long is it likely to take for him to accept that? But who knows? Not immediately? No, no, absolutely not. Not while he's still spitting feathers. So, in the meantime, keep in mind what you want for Home Farm. What I want? Personally. I mean, from what I see, it looks like you've come around to thinking Home Farm is where you want to be eventually. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I have. Then, maybe you ought to think about that before jumping in too quickly to defend Stella. Oh, well... What? I'm not sure about that. No, all I'm saying well, is... it wouldn't be right to land her in it. No, no, I'm not saying you should do that, Adam. Just be careful you don't upset the equilibrium by saying too much. The best policy is to say as little as possible. Well... Yeah, maybe. And avoid giving any impression that you played any part in the purchase of this drill. I didn't. Well, there you are, then. Stella's a capable woman, wouldn't you say? She is, And yeah. she'd survive a near bashing from Brian Aldridge. Oh, definitely. So, where's the need for you to be involved? This is great, Helen. It's Mexican. I know. Oh, I could really get used to this. I called the restaurant this afternoon. I've got them to do some dishes specially. Is this the one next to the bookshop? Mm-hmm, that's the one. I know it. Of course. I don't think I've actually been there, though. 
Lee? Maybe we should give it a try someday. You haven't been there? What do you think? Should we do that? <laughs> oh, hello. What? <laughs> Your face. You do know of course it. I oh, do. You fool. How could I not know it? We had our first date there. <laughs> I thought you'd forgotten. Forgotten? You're joking. I'll never forget it. We had enchiladas. <laughs> yeah, and tostadas. <laughs> you were so well behaved and polite, hardly recognised you. I, I'm always well behaved and polite. <laughs> and afterwards, do you remember, you told me you thought enchiladas were spiders. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Lee, I was there. No, that was you. You actually told me there were spiders. Uh, maybe I did, but you believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was thinking... About San Francisco. No, let's not talk about that now. A single sentence, then we can park it. Go on, then. It's... I only wanted to say... I don't have to go. What? To San Francisco. If it saves us a bit more money, I mean, it might make the difference. I wouldn't want you to think... The thing is, it's yours, Helen, if you ever need it. Lee, I couldn't. Anyway, it's not just for you, it's for me as well. How? How would that be for you? Because it's something I could do. It's a way of helping. I can't do much else Lee. to make things better. And anyway, it's not forever. We can't go this year, but there'll be other years. It's just for now. <sighs> don't you think you help me enough? No, I'm only saying... Well, don't. Don't say anything else. I want you to go, Lee. I want you to be with your girls in San Francisco. Yeah. Well, just bear it in mind. Bear it in mind? <laughs> you sound like a careers advisor. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, cheers. Look, don't ever think you haven't helped me, Lee. I thought I'd never be with anyone ever again. I thought I was too broken for love. But you proved me wrong, and you keep on proving me wrong day after day. You make me so happy. Oh, hello. No, single sentence, you said. That's enough. I just finished your spiders. I love you. <laughs> It's all coming together. As predicted. And all these stalls, Freddy, there's such a variety. Well, I did say, didn't I? And it's all superior stuff. Lower Loxley, late Mayfest. It's going to be something special. And you've got fine weather. Well, it was on my list. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be all ready for a ten o'clock start, will we? Naturally. What about Eddie Grundy? Oh, I've sorted Eddie. You haven't barred him or anything, have you? No. Because I think there should be room for things like Wildlife Underground. Well, and Eddie. He's given up pretending it's Wildlife Underground. It's now full-on ferrety fun. Oh. And I'm really not sure that's a good look for us. It sends the wrong message. So what have you done about it? It's the ferret trouser lower Loxley combination. It doesn't really work. Freddie, and um... It's all right, Mum. I've sorted it diplomatically and everyone's happy. How? Well, I've given him a pitch out of sight. What do you mean, out Rabbit! of sight? Rabbit! Round the back of the big greenhouse, off the beaten track. He'll hardly be seen there. Uh, Ian! Have you seen the Eddie Grande? Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, is everything all right? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. What's up? Eddie's not happy with where he's been put. He wants to be on the main avenue. Well, he can't be. It's already arranged. Tell him from me. It's too late. He's already moved. Where? Yeah, on his own initiative. He's setting up now. Setting up where? Next to my pizza van. <sighs> and honestly, they don't go together, Freddy. Pizzas and ferrets just don't go. It's going to put people off. Yes, it's all right, all right. I'll talk to him now. Brian? Yes? Brian Aldridge. We haven't actually met, but I do know about you. <laughs> yeah, that sounds ominous. From Roy Tucker, who works with me at Grey Gables. Oh, yes, of course, yeah. Ardil Shah. Oh, good to meet you, Ardil. So you've come to investigate the late Mayfest too? Well, not exactly. I didn't know it was on. Oh? It was quite well advertised. Well, not well enough to catch my eye. No. Roy told me about your loss. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I was saddened to hear that. Well, thank you. A long time together? A uh, good long time, yes. Not everyone knows what to say in situations like this. Oh, you're right. I probably err on the side of saying too much. But better too much than not enough, I think. I suppose so. Though sometimes a tactful silence might be preferable for the one who's grieving. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was our anniversary on Monday. Oh? Would have been our 47th. 47? Did you do anything to mark it? No. 
Well, it must be hard to know what to do. No, 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 it wasn't indecision. I, uh, I decided not to. Just another day, I thought. Carry on as usual. Now I regret it. I, I, I should have done something. So, not just another day. No, no, I, no, I don't know why I thought that. Partly she had bloody mindedness, I suppose. My children were all pushing me to do something, and I thought, just a minute, hang on. This is this is my occasion, not yours. Well, yes. Private. Exactly. In a way, the kids are late arrivals on the scene. Yes, and they tend to interfere anyway. But for the best of reasons, I'm sure. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, but uh, still. Yes. Anyway, that's why I came to Lower Loxley today, to, um, well, to wander through the grounds on my own. As if, as if I was going for a walk with Jenny. On your own? Well, I thought I would be, but as I said, I didn't know about this blessed late fest thing. Not quite according to plan, then. No, no not quite. And then you find yourself ambushed by a stranger. No, no, I don't mind that. I should leave you to wander in peace. As peaceful as possible, anyway. No, no, Ida, wait, wait. Don't go on my account. Well, that's all right. We all want in to be... In fact, I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, no need to rush off, and unless you have to. Hi, Ian. How's it going? Oh, fantastic. I've been really busy. Well, everyone has. Including Eddie. <laughs> Including Eddie. Because I've been feeling bad about that. Oh, you don't have to. I didn't mean to go all diva on you, but it really was crowding me out. No, no, you were right. And ferrets alongside pizzas, I could see it wasn't really going to work. <laughs> well, Eddie's perfectly happy where he is. What, back by the big greenhouse? No, no, he's in the courtyard. The courtyard? How did he wangle his way in there? He didn't wangle, Ian. It was my suggestion. Really? Yeah, I told him he could have a courtyard pitch, but certain conditions would have to apply. What, like, um, no ferret and trouser action? <laughs> yeah, they stay in their cages, the ferrets. Turns out there are health and safety rules and regulations. At events like this, you can't have uncaged animals within 50 metres of food and or drink. Oh, is that a fact? Well, it is now. <laughs> mm. And if Ellie demands to see the documentation... Well, it'll be ready to read by tomorrow morning. But I've also placed him next to the birds of prey display, <laughs> so to avoid any possible carnage... The ferrets stay in their cages. <laughs> and he's agreed to this, has he? Well, a bit grumbly at first, <laughs> but there's a lot of people passing by, and Clary's got a line-up of knitted ferret characters. Oh, of course, merchandise. <laughs> well, which are selling like hot... Well, like hot ferrets. So, uh, on the whole, Eddie's well satisfied with the arrangement. <laughs> That's so devious, Freddy. <laughs> and so clever. Oh, what's so clever? Well, I believe that would be me. <laughs> has he told you how he's managed to keep a lid on the ferrets? <laughs> oh, uh, no, I don't think he has. Well, not yet, Mom, anyway. what's the matter? Nothing. Well, something is. No, it's, it's all right. It can wait. You've heard, haven't you, from the trustees? Hey, Ardell, what do you think of this pair? What are they? Ferrets, of course. Knitted by Clary Grundy. What do you want with knitted ferrets? Well, I rather like them. This one has the look of Justin Elliott about it, don't you think? Hmm. Even so, Brian. Actually, they're for my grandchildren. One for Xander, one for Martha. They've got hats on. Yes, and shirts. Or are they jumpers? But no trousers. That's not logical. But it would be if they had trousers. It would make a little more sense, yes. I don't think Clary's aiming for realism. It's odd, though. Jackets, but no trousers. That always worried me about Winnie the Pooh. Does it, really? Not now, it doesn't. When I was a child. Well, my concern is not how they're dressed, but what to call them. No, Brian, you can't call them anything. Yeah, but they have to have names. That's for Xander and Martha to decide. Oh, yes, yeah, good point. You can't give them pre-named ferrets. <laughs> no. That would count as interfering. And we've already established families really shouldn't interfere. Oh, over there, look, look, Jim Lloyd. Ah, oh, yes. You know Jim, do you? Yes, we've met. So you've heard about his missing glasses? Of course. And I think everyone in Ambridge has. He and Jazz are trying to track them down. It's a bit like Holmes and Watson. Or Morse and Lewis. Yes, better. Morse and Lewis. But they're not having much success by all accounts. No. Well, if it follows the usual pattern, Halfway through the investigation, a second pair of glasses should go missing. <laughs> yes, just before the commercial break. As a matter of fact, 
I did hear that Chris Carter put them on the statue of a dog in Borchester. What, the glasses? Yes. Well, maybe they're still there. Jim should really investigate that. I'm sure he will. <laughs> and what about you, Ardell? Me? Well, I've gone on and on about me and my lot. Tell me about yourself. I run Grey Gables, Brian. That about sums up my entire story at the moment. They still don't trust me. That's not what they're saying. That's exactly what they're saying, Mum. Not fit to inherit. They're delaying the moment, that's all. They obviously think I'm lying about damaging the picture. That doesn't follow. And they'll review my case in due course. What's that supposed to mean? Look, we can talk about this later. Let's get today finished first. What's the point? No, come on, don't no, say I that. I mean it, Mum. Why should I bother? Because you've done a fantastic job on this event. You must want to see that through. Well, I don't. Why should I help them make money for their wretched stately home? If they want it, they can run it. No, I've, I've let the work slide in the last few weeks, I'm afraid. Given what happened, that's perfectly understandable. Yeah, but you can't do that in farming, though. If you're a farmer, you have to keep on top of things, day in, day out. Mm. I'd say that's the same with hospitality. Mm. Jenny was always a support for the farm. Always ready with her opinion, and most of the time I ignored it, but occasionally she was spot on. You know, it was Jenny who advised me to hire Stella. Your farm manager? Yes. And how has that worked out? Oh, we cross swords every now and again, but uh, she knows her stuff. Actually, as a matter of fact, we're about to cross swords again. Oh, yes? Yeah, she went ahead and bought a pretty expensive piece of kit while... I was distracted by everything else going on at home. Oh, dear. So, we're having a conversation about it on Friday. <laughs> you know what it's like. There's a fine line between letting your people take initiative and you keeping control of the business. <laughs> a very fine line. What would Jenny say? Uh, about this? Hmm. Um, she'd say, listen. Listen to Stella. Before you make any decisions? <laughs> Definitely. She'd probably be right. Yeah, probably would. And the rest of the family? Well, they'd have their opinions, and they'd certainly let me know what they were. Will you ask? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> A toast, then. To families. To families. Bless them. May they remain ever close, but not too close. <laughs> Where did you go? Does it matter? And just asking out of interest, it's not an interrogation. I watched Rex's pigs for a while. And how was that? Fascinating. I envied them. You want any of this omelette? No, you're all right. Well, there's more than I can manage. Go on, then. Today went really well, if you're interested. Not particularly. I, I don't know how you can say that. You put so much into the Mayfest. Surely you care about what actually happened. There's no point. Of course there is. Mum, this is never going to change. They keep doing it. They go into a huddle and then they come up saying that they need more time. Put it off. Put everything off. Yeah, but not forever. No? What they decided today isn't to delay the day I inherit, but to delay the decision. A year, a couple of years, and then they'll get together again, look through my record, criminal conviction, time inside, no serious qualifications, and they'll put it off again. By the time I inherit the house, if I ever do, oh. I'll be as doddery as them. Don't, Freddy. So actually, no. There really is no point. No point at all. Then what are you going to do? Mm, don't ask me. Ask the trustees. Oh, forget the trustees for a moment. Freddy, I love... I, I absolutely love working with you. I love your spark and your ideas. And honestly, nothing gives me greater pleasure than to watch a day like today unfold because of what you did. Because you had a plan that worked. But now you need a plan for yourself. Maybe I do. So, here's the first step. I want you to take a break. You've worked hard, especially lately, and you could do with the rest. So take a few days off. Then come back refreshed and we'll work out what happens next together. What'd you say? Oh, do. Tracy. You walk into work. I thought I would for a change. Yeah, well, if it keeps you fit. That's what they say. How's Jazza, the family? 
They're all right, thank you. Well, Jazz is supposed to be sorting out the reception for the wedding. Your wedding, in fact. Yeah, that's right. Only now he's devoted his old time to looking for Jim Lloyd's blooming glasses. Ah, they haven't found them yet. No. Alistair, that's Jim's son, says his dad had them on when he got home that night, but they're nowhere in the house. Get a replacement pair is probably the answer. They can't do that. That's too easy. They have to track them down the hard way. Why? Oh, it's all about pride. I hope their quest is successful. <laughs> I'll tell him you said so. Personally, I wish they'd give up. Oh, by the way, I should be thanking you for last Friday. Last Friday? Yeah, you know, my hen night. Oh, yes? We'd have been proper stuck without Grey Gables. Thought we weren't going to have anywhere at all, till Oliver offered us the chance. Of Grey Gables? Yeah, so thank you. They've done it up real nice, haven't they? Oh, they're making a good job of things, certainly. He's so kind, Oliver. Yes, isn't he? And he was actually with you, was he, on Friday night? On and off he was, yeah. On and off. How many of you were there? About a dozen, I suppose. And you enjoyed yourselves? Oh, it was great. A real lovely night. Like they say, time of my life. Hmm. It was so brilliant of you to let us use it. Yes, well, always good to hear of satisfied customers. Glad it all went so well, Tracy. Well, off the record. We're just a chat, really, Justin. But off the record. Well, only in the sense that it's a conversation between friends and needn't go further than that. Then what's it about? Well, you worked with Stella Pryor for a while, didn't you? Stella? Yeah, before she came to Home Farm. Oh, yeah, I did, briefly. Yes, why? In Cambridgeshire, wasn't it? Why do you want to know, Brown? No, no, no special reason. No. I, I'd heard you'd work with her, so I thought it made sense to ask, that's all. Just filling in the background? That's about it. Hmm. All right, I'll tell you what I know. Um, yeah, about tea, coffee, uh, something else? Well, just a coffee, please, Justin. Hmm. And as we seem to be trading good turns, will you be coming to the public meeting in the village hall? Uh, about the charging station? Uh, I might, yes. Well, it, it would be good if you could. Any support for the cause would be most welcome. <laughs> what are you having, Harrison? Pint? Oh, yeah, I love a pint, but I can't really stop. Fallon just asked me to drop these dishes by for Jolene. I'll see she gets them. Ta. Mind you, you do look like a drink might help. Oh, it's not that bad, is it? You look done in. Yeah, well, it's been an hard week. Busy? Busy enough. I don't mind busy, though. Stressful, then. Mm. I mean, you probably see some stuff. You do, but you deal with it. How? Well, you have different strategies. You talk to Fallon? No, no, not if I can help it. Wouldn't be fair. On her? On her, exactly. Be like passing on the bad stuff. You have to, though, sometimes, don't you? Give out bad news, I mean. You do, and that's the worst part, Tracy, I'm telling you. And if you know the people, if they're more or less mates... Oh, even harder. Yeah. Like when I had to take your brad in for questioning. I felt bad about that. Did you? It didn't show. Oh, yeah, I did, for Brad's sake and yours. You still gave him a hard time, Harrison. I had no choice. It had to be done, but at the same time, I know Brad's a good lad, good at art, you know, and... I could see what it was doing to you. And that's what you've had this week, is it? Difficult stuff. Well, let's just say, uh, bad news for folk who were waiting to hear something better. You want something to take your mind off it. That'd be a strategy. Cricket helps me. Does it? Yeah, when things are bad, it helps sort me out. Just being out there with the team, or running into bowl, or you've got a bat in your hand and someone else is running in at you, you blank everything else out. Kind of puts you in a different world. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like Jazzer. <laughs> he doesn't do cricket. No, I mean him and his blinking foot. Oh. It's getting him down. Can't do this, can't do that, and moaning the backside off himself. So what does he do about it? Well, he won't do anything unless I tell him. <laughs> so I said he needs something to occupy him, take his mind off his foot. Like? Like trying to put him on this thing Kirsty's been on about. What, an herbal tonic or something? No, this nature thing. And it's working on Jazza? Well, it don't officially start till today, but we had a go at a couple of activities, just as a try-out sort of thing. Hmm. And it had an effect? Not on Jazza, no, but it might do you a bit of good. Maybe it would. Yeah. Uh, suppose I come back at lunchtime, you couldn't tell me more, could you? Yes, yes, she worked for Damara. A big farm in Cambridgeshire, mostly wheat, barley, peas. 
She got very good returns from it when she was there. So professional, good at the job. I'd say so. And ambitious? Oh, for the business, yes. Personally? Well, a healthy degree of personal ambition, I'd say. But you don't object to ambition, I hope. No, not at all. No, you need a spark of something. How is she to work with? Oh, surely Stella's been with you long enough for you to answer that question yourself. Well, it's always good to get someone else's point of view. Specifically now? In general terms, as I said. You had a falling out? No. No? Well, she's away at the moment. Not here to have a falling out with. So I couldn't, could I? Did you? Did I what? Have a falling out ever? I, I, I don't think so. So no particular failings or bumps in the road? No. Well, if, if anything, I suppose you could say she keeps her cards close to her chest. Does she? But that could be considered basic common sense. You mean secretive? No, 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 not excessively, no. To be honest with you, Brown, she's good at the job. And she very much believes in family-run farms as the backbone of agriculture in this country, which makes her an ideal fit for home farm, I'd have said. Impressive, yes. Hmm. Well, if you're asking my advice, I think you'd do well to nurture Stella Pryor and see that no one else comes along and poaches her. Ah, Oliver. Ah, morning, Ardell. I thought that might be you. How can I help? I was hearing about Tracy Horobin's hen night this morning. Oh, yes? Seems to have gone well. Yeah, it did. Very good night for all concerned. So I hear. You should have been there. Yes, I think I probably should. But I couldn't, could I? No? Not when I didn't know about it. No. No, I see. I would very much like to hear about it, though. Yes, of course. Shall we say my office, two o'clock? Would that be convenient for you? Oh, this is just right, Tracy. Thanks very much. Cheese mm. and pickle. Can't be beat. You want a drink with that? No, I'm just having a quick bite. I'm on duty at two. Right then. Mm. 30 days wild. Yeah. Tell me what you know. Well, like I said, it's a kind of get back to nature kick. Anyone doing it has to promise to connect with nature stuff all the days of June. Nature stuff? So that's your 30 days, see? What kind of nature stuff? Oof, all sorts. Kirsty said it could be quite small. Sounds a bit alternative. I don't think so. Like hugging a tree? Well, you could do that, if that's what you fancy. Or if you meet a specially attractive tree. Which you're bound to do round here. <laughs> but you don't have to do any hugging. There's other things. No, no, I've got nothing against it. It's not just trees. I've never really looked at them before. Not properly. I mean, I know that they're around the cricket field and along the lanes and places, but I don't really take them in. That's the point, I think. To make you look closer. Do you know anything about trees, Tracy? Not a lot. No, me. I like an oak tree. That's probably my favourite. I haven't got a favourite tree. Or holly. Holly's nice. Is that a tree? Holly. I thought it was a bush. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit of both. So what's Jazza doing? Like I said, it's only started today. But you said he had a trial run or something. We did. We had a go at have your breakfast in the open air. Oh, how was that? Well, he moaned about the flies. I liked it. I said, Jazzer, this is your chance to find out something you didn't know before. About the flies? Right. And what did he say? I couldn't repeat it, Harrison, respectable woman like me. <laughs> You're right, though, Tracy. You really could find out about flies. I know nothing about them. Nor do I. I know nothing about trees. I know nothing about flies. <laughs> w where do flies live? How can they walk up windows? Why do they sit there rubbing their little hands together? If they are hands. It's a mystery. But Jazza wasn't interested. How'd you keep him off the porridge? <laughs> That's all he wanted to know. <laughs> well, it sounds to me as if he's missing out here. You could be right. Who do you promise? What? You said you have to promise to do this for 30 days. Who do you promise to? Yourself, mostly, I think. But there's probably somewhere you can sign up, see what other people are doing. Well, I might just do that. It'd be something a bit different. It would. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks very much for telling me about this. I'll keep you posted. I'm curious about this event, Oliver. Tracy's hen night. Perhaps you could fill me in. Oh, it's quite straightforward, really. Tracy's friends were completely thwarted in their search for a venue. I think they were on the brink of abandoning the whole thing. And it suddenly struck me, here's a friend in need of a room, and here we are with the rooms ready to go. Ready to go? Yes. I, I think maybe you're a little anxious about that? The fitness of the rooms used? 
That's not unreasonable. No, but there's nothing to concern you there, Aradil. And rooms. You talk of rooms, none of which was officially booked. Well, there was the luxury lounge, the kitchen off, cloak rooms, but all of them signed off by the building inspectors as safe and ready for use. We can actually open those rooms to the public now if we wanted. I'm sure we could, but we haven't. And essentially, this is the point. It seems we've opened before we were ready to open, and without those who needed to know actually knowing. Well, yes, I can see that. Can you, Oliver? Really? Because I didn't know about this, and my employers, your co-owners, didn't know. And I think those are significant omissions. Well, I'm sorry I didn't mention it, but there was hardly time. How long would it have taken? Yes, I, I know you should have been told, but there was, as Not I say... Not told. Sorry? We should have been asked. Not told. Well, this was just a favour, though. A favour for a few friends. Yes, it was a kind thought. But you remember how those lads, those village lads, broke in? How they vandalised your bench? Think how you felt then. Oh, come on, Ardell. Taken advantage of. The two things are hardly comparable. Are they not? One of the lads, as I recall, was Tracy Horobin's son. The other, her nephew. And these two events are both cases of trespass. Trespass? And, and as such, illegal. I would be justified in taking steps. What? But I've decided not to do that. I won't be passing on this information. But you have to be realistic, Oliver. You're no longer the sole owner of this hotel, and you can't carry on behaving as if you are. It's immensely frustrating, Jazza. I know. We're getting nowhere. Damara are toying with us. Huh? And the EV company. What's that to do with your specs? Oh, nothing. I'm talking about the electric vehicle charging station. Mm. The meeting in the village hall has been postponed. Do you actually want to buy anything, Jazza? Uh, no explanation, no apology. Jazza! But, no, no, I'm here to see the prof. Uh, we have a little business to attend to. Well, so do I. Stacking shelves. We're on the trailer. Jim is missing specs. Stacking shelves for proper customers. Uh, we've assembled all the relevant evidence. If Jazz is not one, perhaps you ought to clear off. You chuck at a man who's still on one leg. Anyway, there's no one else in. They could come in at any moment. Just be a little patient, Susan. I believe we're on the verge of a breakthrough. Breakthrough. Hey, Prof, what we got? So far, we have a number of photos and three or four witness statements. One, Alistair swears he definitely saw you at him at the end of the night and wearing well your specs. Which can't be considered strong testimony because there's no supporting evidence, no photograph. And because he also swore you came him wearing his shirt, which he didn't he? So, now you've lost Jim's glasses and Alistair's shirt. We are not interested in the shirt, only the glasses. Two, Chris remembers putting the glasses on the statue of Doug in Borchester. And there is photographic evidence for this. They can suit that, Doug. Do you know think, Prof? Three, Neil says he lined everyone up for a team photo in that Indian restaurant. Well, you can take my Neil's word. He wouldn't have been as wasted as the rest of you. <laughs> you didn't see him doing his bell ring and maim in the restaurant? Uh, Susan's right, though. We can take Neil's word. And again... There's a photo. It shows you without your specs. So, what have we got? Very little. Now, please, Susan, don't chip in. This requires concentration. This is a three-pipe problem. Only because you've missed the obvious. What? Well, if you put all these photos together and look at the times they were taken... We'd have a timeline. <laughs> and we could find out where we were when the specs were last seen. Elementary, really. Here we go. Come see. Come on. Come and say hello. Oh, was he good while I was away? Perfect. We're sorry to see him go, Xander especially. Oh, you've been a good dog. Have you been good? What about you, Stella? Have I been good? Well... <laughs> no, I mean, how was the wedding? Oh, the wedding. It was great. Ah. It was lovely to spend time with my sister and her new family. Wait, right, let's put your lead on. Hey, let's stand still, you soppy animal. Well, it's good to have you back. Everything all right here, is it? About uh, here? You and Ian, home farm. Adam? Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Brian's managed without me, is he? Oh, yeah, getting back in the swing of things. He's fine. 
Well, I'll be calling by this afternoon. I'm actually really looking forward to getting back. We've been through all the photos now. There's no sign of them after the restaurant. There is this one, Mayor. Where you can see the glasses. Aye, look, Prof, this must be it. You and me on the green. It, it can't be. The last picture. I haven't got my glasses on. No, but I have. You? Let me see that. Last seen wearing? Yes. I remember now. You borrowed my glasses to make you look like a scholar. Aye, how was your brainy student? It's all coming back to me. I can see us on the green, arm in arm, Neil and Chris singing. Mm, and then where, where do we go after that? There's a van coming along. I can picture a burger van. Aye, Chuck's chips. Chuck's chips. <laughs> we flagged it down. Who wants some chips? I did, and Neil did. And I, I propped my crutch against the side of the van and got my wallet out. And that's right, I couldn't see properly. So you took the glasses off? And left them on the counter and came away with a bag of chips. But no glasses? This is it, Prof. The specs were last seen on Chuck's counter. Does he keep lost property? I don't know, but we can ask. What time is it? Uh, just gone, half past eleven. Why? Because I happen to know that Chuck's chips does a Friday lunchtime stint in a lay-by just outside Lakey Green. Then we can go and ask him. Oh, Brian. Afternoon, Stella. I wasn't expecting to see you. No? Not at my desk. Well, I thought I'd be here to welcome you back. Oh, thanks, Brian. Good to see you. Uh, excuse me, I have a call to make. Okay. I'd like Adam to join us. Adam? Why? As a witness. This car's not built for a man with a broken foot. What happened? <laughs> Just a minute. Ah, let me steal my crutch. Uh, did you see Chuck? Did he remember you? Aye, and I. It's all a bit weird. And the glasses? Uh, he flagged him, didn't see. <laughs> Not many people do that. That's how he remembers us. Well, the glasses. And the glasses, aye. He gets bits and pieces of lost property from time to time, and he stashes them away in an old cardboard box. Mostly it doesn't get claimed, but this but time... he put my glasses in the box. Aye. Uh, so, you've got them? No. No? Jazza, what's going on? Tell me. Somebody's already claimed them. What? Somebody picked them up on Monday. Who? He can't remember. You must have told someone about Chuck's chips. Me? Why not you? Well, because it was expunged from my memory until an hour ago. Mine and also, I couldn't have told them they could have. Except... Except what? Somebody did say something to me earlier in the week. About Chuck's chips? Aye. It was all a bit weird. Who? Just bringing a chip van into the conversation like that. Was there any real reason? Jazza! Strange. Who mentioned the chip van? Who? Thank you for joining us, Adam. Sorry I'm a bit late. No, that's all right. I don't want to rush this. Well, now you're here, perhaps someone can tell me what this is all about? Yes, I, I'm sorry for the awkward silence, Stella, but it was best to wait till a third party was present. Why? To discuss what? Do you know? No, no, I'm afraid not. Well, I can tell you now. I've been going through the books, and I've noticed a large deposit for a new disc drill. Ah, yes. With several other larger payments planned for the next couple of years. I mean, all in all, a rather substantial decision to make on your own. Oh, yes, it was. So I thought I'd like to hear your thinking on the subject. Well, I'm sure you're wondering why we've called on you out of the blue like this. I thought you might pop round at some point. Oh, you did, did you? Yes, Jazza. In fact, I thought you might have been round a bit sooner than this. You've been expecting us. Why? Well... Did you, or did you know have a chat with me earlier in the week about... About Chuck's chips. Yes, I did. So, you admit it? <laughs> Why shouldn't I? Talking to you might be a waste of time, but it's not illegal. We believe this may have some bearing on the search for my glasses. Come on, tell us. What do you know about the prof specs? I'll gladly tell you everything. Oh, please, go ahead. Well, after your stag do, Neil came reeling in early hours of Sunday and he didn't get up till well on the way to noon. When I got into the kitchen on the morning, there, bang in the middle of the table... What? Half a bag of Chuck's chips. So I knew the night must have ended at the van, 
but I didn't think any more of it until Sunday afternoon when I wandered down to the cricket for the 2020 and everyone was in a right old flat because Jim's glasses had gone missing and the score was all over the shop. I wouldn't say that. Anyway, I put two and two together. Worth going to ask Chuck if he'd seen them, I thought. And it was. I've had them since Monday. Monday? What? You do know that we've been looking for them. Everyone knows you have. We've been tracking clues backwards and forwards across the village and you're telling me they've been here all the time. And they are still here, are they? Oh, yes. I'll have them safe. But you said nothing to anyone. I did say something. I mentioned Chuck's chips to Jazzy. Why? To see how you'd react. And he didn't? Not a word. Complete blank. Well, I couldn't react if I couldn't remember, could I? Well, there's a lesson there somewhere, Jazza. So, again, why go to all this trouble? Well, I was waiting. What for? An apology. An apology? For what? Being so rude. Uh, me? The prof? When I lost my sunglasses in the shop the other week. You were so sarky and rude about it. Was I? So when yours sort of fell into my lap, I thought, well, I might hang on to him till he said you were sorry. That is devious. I'll gladly say sorry. What? Uh, it was thoughtless and unkind of me. Apology accepted. Don't mention it. After all she put us through? Here's your specs. And thus the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. Yes, well... And if you look at the figures, the financial and environmental returns alone more than justify the outlay. Mm, thank you, Stella. I'd say that pretty well sets out the advantages of the drill. Although the advantages aren't really the point. Aren't they? We do need that drill for need? this year's operation. We couldn't keep putting off the decision. That's your assumption. It's more than an assumption, Brian. I talked to you about this. And did I tell you to go ahead? You put off deciding. Put off? Isn't that, in fact, a decision in itself? How? Well, if you're going to read anything into me not deciding, you have to take it to mean don't go ahead, surely. I don't see that. Look, this wasn't just me forging on regardless. I put all the details in my quarterly reports. The hard copies are here on the desk somewhere. Yes, here they are. These went to everyone. Everyone. And there were no objections. Again, no objections doesn't constitute permission to proceed. But I did have permission. I was authorised. Authorised? Really? Yes. Adam? Adam, I asked you about this. We had a conversation. Did you? Yes, we did. We talked. And you said I should consider myself in charge. No. While the family were grieving, you did. No, no. no. I said you had the day-to-day -day running of Home Farm. I certainly didn't agree to you buying the drill. What? You weren't authorised to do that. Ah, which is exactly what we're talking about here. Why didn't you stop me then? Did you even read these? I should have done what you did, Brian. Which is what? Got someone else to witness that conversation. Oh, right. right. Look, that's enough. Look, you're more or less calling Adam a liar. All I'm saying is we talked about this and we have two different versions of what was said. And I know who I'm inclined to believe. Oh, I see. I've given you a chance to explain yourself, Stella, and you failed to come up with a plausible response. You've done exactly what you want against the interests of Home Farm and the family. As far as I can see, that counts as gross misconduct. G gross misconduct? This is ridiculous. You can therefore consider your contract terminated. Effective immediately. <laughs> 